Okay, so my purpose was to essentially give you some ideas about life and entrepreneurship. So one of the things that occurs to me as an entrepreneur is that every single day we walk up and down the street and there are so many times we hear ourselves say or hear somebody else say, why doesn't somebody do something about this? Why doesn't somebody do something about this? As an entrepreneur, your answer should be, what is it that I can do about it? It's because you who is going to make a difference. So what's an entrepreneur? Each one of you here in this room, in some way, is an entrepreneur. Most people think of an entrepreneur as somebody who starts a company. To me, an entrepreneurship is not somebody who necessarily starts a company, but it's a state of mind. So what is that state of mind that makes you an entrepreneur? When you see a problem, you think of a solution, and you go out and do something about it. When somebody who sees the problem, we call them human beings, right? When somebody can think of a solution, we call them visionary. And when somebody goes out and does something about it, we call them an entrepreneur. So you entrepreneurs are here because you want to solve problems. The entrepreneurs are problem solvers. That's what we do. We look at the world differently. We look at the world in a way that has never been looked before. We think of a problem and think, how do we solve it in a way that nobody else has done it? It's not about the vision. It's not about the ideas. It is about going out and doing something about it. It's all about execution, execution, execution. So I'm going to focus a little bit more about how do we use the innovation and entrepreneurship to solve some of the world's greatest challenges. And if you start to think about the big challenges, each one of us have a dream of building a billion dollar company. How do we build a billion dollar company if you're solving a million dollar problem? Right? That means to build a billion dollar company, you got to think and solve a hundred billion dollar problem. And it so happens, these large problems happen to be the big social problems. Whether it's a problem in healthcare, the education, the energy, and you go down the shortage of food and the clean water. If you can go out and solve these big problems, not only you're going to, not only you're going to do tremendous good in the world, you're going to do tremendous good for yourself. And there is nothing wrong by, in doing well by doing good. And if you can do both, you are a great entrepreneur. So let's talk about some of the problems that I mentioned. How do we focus on solving the healthcare problem as an entrepreneur? You look at this stuff and saying, there are billion people around the world. There are billions of people around the world who have no access to healthcare. Whether you look in India and Africa, there are just no healthcare available. And you say, you know, maybe we could build hospitals. Maybe we could train more doctors. Guess what? That is a non-scalable way of doing, solving problems. If you want to build a great company, you have to make it scalable and you have to make it sustainable. How do you make something scalable? You take the problem on the surface that looks like an infrastructure problem and you convert that into a knowledge problem. What is a healthcare problem? People are sick and they need to be diagnosed what disease they have. That to me is a knowledge problem. Why is it that we can't use, now we can get the tablet devices, Android tablet devices for $35 in India. So by the way, I just came back. I was speaking at NASCOM in Bangalore and I was in Bombay at World Economic Forum and met hundreds of these entrepreneurs there, thousands and thousands of great entrepreneurs. Interesting thing was, these people are thinking very creatively. So when we were talking about healthcare, my challenge to them was, why is it, why can't we take a small tablet device that has a software and a small sensor, a lab on the chip that you can spit on, cuff on, and drop a blood drop, and it can diagnose the diseases better than any board certified physician. In, in real time, you cuff on it, and it says, sir, you have a malaria. 
and you can spit on it and say you have dengue fever or you have it a tuberculosis or you have HIV there is nothing absolutely that can't be done all of those technology exists today so none of this thing I'm talking about is science fiction all those technology around microfluids and microfluidic technology and the chip at lab on the chip exists today where you'll be able to do that all we have to do is take these technologies that exist in isolation, put them together with the software, bundle with a tablet device that can now be operated by a high school village girl in a village. So as opposed to getting abused, as opposed to getting married at 13 years old, now she can become a village doctor and be respected. Not only you do a tremendous good to that village where you now have a doctor, you do a tremendous good to that girl and the family and the community where the, each girl is now being respected because she is a doctor. Now look at education. Our problem in the education system, everybody tells us the education system is broken. And we all can tell you why it's broken, because we're not paying enough to the teachers. We are not training the teachers. It is not about the teachers. Why is it a child who can go and solve some of the most complex problems in a video game he struggles to do a basic thing in the class? It is about because children are not being engaged. It is because their minds are not being uh, engaged in a way they learn. So I spent last two years learning about how does brain work? How does brain process information? What makes a, uh, what makes a child so addictive to a video game? What's the most effective way we can teach the brain that we all have? This, the brain that we have, interestingly, is not a static part. It's like any other muscle. You can improve the brain's learning capacity at any age. In fact, even at my age, when you and I are talking, every single minute, my brain is being wired and rewired to learn new information. The brain is plastic. It's called neuroplasticity. We can improve the brain's learning capacity simply by improving the functions like memory, the four types of memory, the working memory, the long-term memory, the declarative memory, the episodic memory. Each one of them can be improved. It turns out the thing that we as a parent hate the most is the best thing for children in terms of making decisions. The first person shooting game, the call of duty, that every parent's nightmare. It has been proven that it actually helps the children's executive functions and the decision making. Because every single second, they have to make a decision in real time, should they go left, right, enemies on the left, enemies on the right, enemies in the front, and they have to make this constant decisions. That improves the brain's processing speed. It also, playing video games, improves the spatial skills. When I go play video game, I have to ask the children, tell me how many seconds are left on that corner, I can't read the children can see the whole screen. So interestingly, the way brain learns, it turns out that brains, the fundamental purpose of the brain were two purposes. When we were evolving, it was simply about survival and procreation. That was only two things that mattered to life. The reading is one of the most inefficient way for brain to learn. And the reason for that is when we were living in the jungle, Nowhere it will say, T-I-G-E-R coming, run. Nowhere. Guess what? Brain never had to learn to read to survive. But brain is very, very good at pattern matching. Even behind the bush, you see a tiny bit of yellow color with dots. Brain knows, get the hell out of there. You're going to get eaten. Right? It sees the brown color and the four legs and says, my lunch is running away. I need to go after this. So brain is very good at pattern matching. Brain is very good at you know, other senses, like smell, the sound. What if we are able to incorporate all of those things into a multi-sensory video game? But more than that, the brain has two neurochemicals that are fundamental to survival and procreation, which are also extremely important to education. So if you look at education today, there is a neurochemical called dopamine. Dopamine is brain's internal reward system. It turns out people used to think that when brain wants to reward something, after you get the reward, brain releases dopamine. It turns out it is in the anticipation of the reward the brain releases dopamine. A biggest dose of dopamine gets released in anticipation of the reward. Second is when you take action towards getting that reward and you think you're getting closer to getting the reward, the brain releases a second dose of dopamine. And the third is when you get the reward. So let me give you an example of how it works, or maybe not. I have 30 seconds. Um, 
so let's talk about the second neurochemical. It's called oxytocin. And oxytocin is about, actually was created for, from a procreation perspective, how do we create the bonding? So oxytocin gets released in the mother when she has a baby. So she has this amazing amount of love for the child. It opens up her to the new experience. Now, if we can do that in education, where we can create an engaging, emo, engaging story, an engaging experience in a class, the person would learn the best because they're open to new learnings. And I'm in deficit of seven seconds here, so I'm going to stop at this time and probably take questions about how do we use innovations and entrepreneurship to change the world, whether it happens to be around solving the shortage of food, shortage of energy, clean water. Ask me anything you want. I can tell you how to go do that. But your job as an entrepreneur is to go out and do it. Thank you very much.